We all know what this is and use it every day. Chances are, if you ask your students, they'll probably say that they are experts in finding information on Google. However, when I look at the search habits of adults and students alike, I find that most of us barely even scratch the surface of what this search engine is truly capable of. Hello and welcome, my name is Chris Barnaby, and this video is meant for teachers who want to show their students how to get the most out of Google using the advanced search feature. Please join me. To access the advanced search feature from the Google homepage, find settings. In settings, find advanced search. And here, you will find the advanced search page. The first feature I'd like to draw your attention to is this top part here. This is the area where we can either limit or expand our Google searches. Here's how it works. The first field is just your basic Google search. So this would be equivalent to that field that you bring up whenever you bring up google.com. So in this top field, I'm just going to type in my basic search query. So for the sake of example, let's say I want to find information on the Gettysburg Address. I would type that in there. The next line, I have the option to search specifically for a quote. So let's say I wanted word for word the Gettysburg Address. This would be equivalent in a Google search typing in something in quotation quotations. But here in Google Advanced Search, it's not necessary to use the quotations. So for instance, if I wanted the words of the speech, maybe I would just type in the first line of the speech, four score and seven years ago. The next field allows you to expand your Google search. So bring up more results. So maybe in addition to the Gettysburg Address, I wanted to find information on the National Cemetery that was built in Gettysburg. So in this case, I would just type in the query National Cemetery. And if I would do my search now, I would bring up information on both the speech and the cemetery in Gettysburg. Maybe I found that when I did a Google search on the Gettysburg address, there is a restaurant in Gettysburg, and it brought up that restaurant's websites and maybe some annoying review sites reviewing that, that website. Well, naturally, that doesn't do me really any good if I want, wanted to learn about this topic. So this next field allows us to limit your Google search. So maybe I want to type in restaurant, and then anything talking about the Gettysburg Address restaurant would be left out. This would be the equivalent of putting a minus sign in front of a query in a regular Google search. Next field is for specifying maybe exact dates or amounts. So let's say when I did my search query on the Gettysburg Address, I found a lot of present day news articles that kind of vaguely referenced the speech. That's not necessarily useful for me, so maybe for my preliminary research I found that the Gettysburg Address happened in 1863 and I wanted to specifically zero in on the speech and that time frame. So here I would type in 1863 to 1863 and when I would do my search this would leave out any present-day news articles or anything like that that would reference the Gettysburg address. Now, I filled in every word in all these fields, but keep in mind that's not necessary. You can pick and choose what to limit and to expand. Have you ever wondered why when you do a Google search, it only brings up websites that were published in either the United States or Canada. This is because Google is extremely biased, a fact that most people don't realize. Whenever you conduct a Google search, Google looks at two things before bringing up results. 
Number one, it looks at the location of your IP address. And two, it looks at past searches that you have conducted. Based on those two things, it'll bring up the results. So in actuality, you do not have the whole world at, the fi at your fingertips whenever you do a basic Google search. This can be very concerning whenever you're researching a topic like international relations or diplomatic relations or international incidents that you might want to gain a different perspective other than the American or North American perspective on. The first two fields can help you overcome this. The first field is all about language. And through this field, you can specify Google to bring up websites that have been published in languages other than English. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, if it's published in a different language, how can I read it? Google also has a feature that will allow you to translate that website back into English if you choose to use this option. Second option is also very useful if you want to gain perspective or an international perspective, and you can specify region. Each country has its own Google site, and you can actually specify which country you'd like to visit and search through this field here. So maybe there was an incident between the United States and Brazil, and I want to gain the Brazilian perspective. I can click on Brazil, and whenever I do my search, it will only bring up websites that have been published in Brazil. The following two features I have to show you are important for the currency of the websites that you search for and also the authority. So let's talk first about the last update field. Maybe you're researching a topic that you need very current uh, sources on. For instance, maybe a current event or something in the science field. And whenever you do a search, maybe you only get websites that were published 10 years ago, and that's just too old. So in that case, you'd want to use this field and specify your time frame. Now, the, if you do use this field, the max that you can go back is one year. The next field is the site or domain. Of course, we know the problem with the internet is that anybody can publish a, a website, and the problem with Wikipedia is that anyone could update a Wikipedia or create a Wikipedia page. But there are certain domains out there that are more trustworthy than others. What a domain is, those three letters that follow the dot in a URL. So, for instance, .com, .org, .gov, .edu, .net, etc. The domains that I would highly recommend and point your students to could be the .edu domain or the .gov domain. Certainly .org would also yield credible results, but you'd also want to have some talks about bias. The next two fields I have to show you are particularly useful for elementary school teachers. First field is the safe search. Of course, a concern is whenever we send our students on Google to find websites is, will they yield inappropriate content? With safe search, you can specify to filter out explicit results. While this is not foolproof, it can be very useful. Next field is the reading level field. Let's say you teach primary grades like first and second grade. Google divides websites into three results, basic, intermediate, and advanced. You can, for instance, specify show only websites with reading levels that Google considers to be basic. Keep in mind this is subjective and not always foolproof, but it can be very helpful. Thanks to multimedia projects, such as videos, Students often turn to Google Images in order to find pictures. This can be problematic because images on the web are protected under federal copyright law and taking them and using them in a project can be illegal or unethical. Advanced search can help us use media ethically and legally through the use of the usage rights filter 
at the very bottom. This option allows you and your students to search for media that the creator has given permission for others to use through the Creative Commons license. All you have to do is pick the level of license that you would like to search for. For most multimedia projects, I would recommend free to use, share, or modify.